Today we're going to be showing you how to get started with RapidQL, a new open source project from Rapid API that allows you to aggregate data from multiple databases and web APIs using unified queries. In this tutorial, we will build a simple app that takes an IP address, identifies the city, and returns the current temperature for that city. We're going to be using two APIs to do this, and we will pass a specific piece of data retrieved from the first API as a parameter in our second API. Again, using RapidQL, we can do all of this with one query. For the purposes of this tutorial, we will be starting with the IP geolocation API. However, we will be using code snippets that are available through Rapid API, so you can pretty much do the same process for any API on the marketplace. To start, we can just navigate to the IP geolocation API listing. This API is completely free to use, so we can go ahead and test the endpoints. It also only has one endpoint, as you can see here on the left, and you can also see that the required parameter is already filled out with an example, but feel free to change that to any IP address that you want. So let's click test endpoint. We got a 200 status code, which means that the test was a success. So we can go ahead and copy this code snippet, just be sure to pick rapid QL from the dropdown options here and go ahead and copy it. I just switched over to VS Code, um, but since this is a new file, we also need to initialize a new instance of the rapid QL library. To do this, simply install the npm package by running the following npm install rapid QL. We can go ahead and paste our code snippet right in here, um, and let's run the file to make sure that it works. You can see we get quite a long response, but we don't really need most of this information, and we actually only need the city name for this tutorial. So what we can do is request that specific information like so. And you can see quite a difference here. Now when I run the file again, we're only getting exactly what we wanted instead of all of this excess information. So now that we have successfully used an IP address to get a city location, the next step will be getting the weather for the specific city we identified based on the IP address. For this tutorial, we are going to use the Open Weather Map API to do this. This API is a freemium model, which means there are free and paid plans available. We have to be subscribed to one of those before we can get started. For our tutorial, we are just going to pick the free plan, which includes 100 calls per day, so that should be plenty for just getting started. Now that we are subscribed, we can go ahead and test the endpoint. We will be using get current weather data. So we'll go ahead and test our endpoint here, and once we see that it was successful, we can go ahead and choose RapidQL for our snippet. The way that we integrate this API is actually going to be a little bit different from the first one where we just copied the entire code snippet. I'm just going to copy this specific section right here and paste that into our file. So back in VS Code, we just need to add a comma after name and go ahead and paste that section. So what we can do is just add our parameters down here. For this API, we need units, which we will set to Imperial and Q, which is the name of the city. So essentially, this little restructure allows us to pass the city from the first part into the second parameter. The other difference you'll notice is our API key is not included here like it was when we copied the entire code snippet. That's no problem. We can go ahead and just add that as a default header. We will go ahead and run the file, and again, you'll see the response here is quite long. But once again, we don't really need all of this data. For our purposes, we really only need current temperature, and we can go ahead and specify that field in the same way as before. Now when we run this again, we will see our city name and the current temperature, which is exactly what we requested, and it excludes all of the extra data that we did not request. So that's just a brief overview of how to use RapidQL. 
If you're trying to get started, I also recommend checking out the RapidQL docs, which are linked below, and we've also linked the APIs we use for this tutorial and a few other resources. So hopefully that helps, and if you have any questions, please let us know.